orcs, sometimes called goblins in Middle-earth, can sometimes be known as weak, stupid, or expendable in battle, but there are exceptions to these nasty beings. Grishnak was the leader of the Mordor-based orcs. He was characterised as a short, white, and crooked-legged creature with long arms that nearly reached the ground. At Path Galen, Mary and Pippin were taken prisoner by a raiding force that Grishnak was a member of. During the War of the Ring, he served as the leader of the detachment of Mordor orcs that had joined Elk's army on the plains of Rohan. Pippin noticed that Grishnak's voice sounded softer but more nasty than the others when he awoke and heard the orcs bickering. Grishnak vowed to inform Lugbers about the actions of the mountain orcs and Elk. Grishnak and his supporters left Elk's group to travel to the east, but they soon joined the Isgardians as Ema's raiders drew near. Grishnak attempted to search the hobbits for the One Ring at night when he had the opportunity. He thought they had the One Ring after hearing Pippin mimic Gollum's croaking sound, and made an attempt to flee with the two hobbits. He was killed by the raiders of Ema, close to the eaves of Fangol Forest before he could complete this. Gorbag served as Uruk of Minas Morgul's captain. He worked for the Dead City's resident Nazgul. The silent watchers displayed discomfort because a hobbit, Frodo Baggins, had walked by them during the height of the War of the Ring. Then Gorbag and a patrol departed Minas Morgul and were dispatched to Shagrat's command post in Sirith and Gol. Gorbag and Shagrat discovered Frodo, who had been rendered paralysed by Shelob. As their prisoner, they had Frodo brought back inside the Tower of Sirith and Gull. Sam, who was down in the One Ring, overheard them speaking on the way back to the Tower. It was immediately clear that Gorbag was the more perceptive of the two, having noted that the mobilised halfling had a friend because his cords were cut. Shagrat claimed that something was making the Nazgul's nervous. Gorbag corrected him, saying that something had slipped. But Gorbag insisted that Sheila was not acting alone because someone else had severed Frodo's cords. Gorbag's logic was rejected by Shagrat by saying that he always had a pessimistic viewpoint. Gorbag was informed that Frodo was still alive by Shagrat, who had been in the tower for a longer period of time. The two orc captains took Frodo's things. Gorbag attempted to keep Frodo's mithril coat after finding it, which led to a brawl between the followers of the two leaders. Gorbag stabbed Shagrat, who then made an attempt to choke him. Later, after hearing him, he made an attempt to attack Shagrat with a broken spear, slit his throat, then ran over his lifeless body. Tuor slayed Othrod, a lord of the orcs in Gondolin. Othrod was one of the orcs who attacked Gondolin alongside Balrogs when the Drakes arrived during the fall of Gondolin. Tuor eventually killed Othrod, chopping off his helm with an axe, Tramboleg in the process. The Great Goblin, who was the leader of all orcs in the Misty Mountains, was the chief of the goblins who lived in Goblin Town beneath the High Pass. His head was enormous and he was regarded as tremendous. After finding refuge in a cave while attempting to cross the Misty Mountains, Thorin and company were caught by the Great Goblin's people. The Great Goblin questioned the dwarves and Bilbo about their motivations and accused them of being spies thieves, murderers, and allies of the elves, when they were brought before him. He howled in wrath and charged Thorin with his mouth open when one of his guards displayed the great goblin Thorin's sword, or Christ. All of the cave's lights went out at that precise time, and the great goblin was fatally stabbed by a flashing sword. The group quickly learned that Gandalf had used his weapon Glamdring to slay the great goblin. Because he was one of the first elves to be taken prisoner and tormented by Morgoth, a mystery person from the Second Age was known by the Orcs as Ada, or Lord Father. Some Sylvan Elves and men of Southlands at first questioned whether he may be a manifestation of Sauron, but Ada was offended by the idea. A massive group of Orcs led by Ada devastated Southland towns like Horden and used its residents as slave labour to excavate the tunnels and channels that subsequently contributed to the eruption of Odoran. Ada is a concept that has only been used in J.R.R. Tolkien's adaption. Therefore, Ada is not considered canonical because he was developed for the Lord of the Rings Rings of Power series. 
The son of Azog, a vengeful orc chieftain known as Bolg of the North, commanded a sizable force in the Battle of the Five Armies. Bion defeated him in an ensuing conflict. As a famous leader of the Northern Orcs, after his father Azog was killed by Dane Ironfoot at the Battle of Azanulbazar, it was Bolg, Azog's son, that succeeded his father. Bolg's hatred for the dwarves was sparked by this, and it only grew after the great goblin was killed in the battle with Thorin company. At Mount Gundabad, the Misty Mountains' orcs' capital, Bolg collected an army of them. With a horde of orcs and a cloud of bats above them, they marched across the Grey Mountains to the east. Bolg led orcs and orcs into combat with the dwarves, wood elves and lake men after they arrived at the Lonely Mountain. His security was all around him, with iron scimitars. As Thorin tried to break through their defences, he was encircled and later perished from his wounds. After the eagles showed up, Bion in the form of a bear appeared. After Bolg was killed, Bion quickly overcame the wargs and orcs. When he killed Thoror, Azog, an orc chieftain from Moria, ignited the war of the dwarves and orcs. In the battle of Azambilza, Dane Second Ironfoot killed him, and his son Bolg replaced him. Azog was the leader of the orcs of Moria and reportedly the most significant orc in the northern realms, yet nothing is known about his early life. Although it is unknown how long an orc lives on average, it is possible that he was one of the orcs who Sauron sent to Moria. Bolg, the only son we are aware of, succeeded him after he passed away. King Thoros' desire to revisit and possibly redefine the lost realm of Khazad Dun, whose mighty ruins Azog dwelt, brought Azog into history. He tried to enter the Great Gates, but Azog and his orcs caught him, killed him, and inscribed Azog on the hewn head. He threw his head at Na, who was waiting outside, and then a purse containing a few pennies of little worth issuing a warning that he would not put up with any more dwarf beggars coming into his dominion at Moria. When Thoros' successor, Thrain, learned of this, he was furious and gathered a group of dwarves to exact revenge on Azog. The dwarves hunted Azog and numerous conflicts ensued as the War of the Dwarfs and Orcs got underway with many underground battles. The decisive battle of Azambazar, which took place in front of Moria gates, took place after nine years of conflict. The battle involved King Thrain II and his son Thorin, and it was coming to a close. Azog and his guards emerged from the inner gate. Thrain was worn out and furious to the point of being partially blind. As hard as he could, he tried to swing, but Azog dodged it and Nain missed, starting his mattox on the ground. When he avoided the dwarf's blow, the orc kicked him in the leg, causing him to stumble. At that point, Azog tried to thrust and behead him but was only able to break Nain's neck due to the sturdy mail he was wearing. Azog now observed him backing away with his forces and attempted to go back inside. Dane second pursued him and beheaded him as he ascended the stairs. Azog was holding the identical coin-filled purse that he had thrown at Na after killing Thoror nine years before, while having his head impaled on a spike. Despite being significantly diminished during the war, Azog's underground dominions in the north fell to his son Bolg, who held them for nearly 150 years before he was too killed at the Battle of the Five Armies. Hope you enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe. Until the next time, on Middle-earth Invader.